Hi, I'm Jeffrey Litt, and I'd like to tell you about a project called Potluck, where we investigated enabling end users to create dynamic documents that serve as personal software. This is joint work done together with Max Schoening, Paul Shen, and Paul Slemtag at the Ink and Switch Research Lab. Text notes can be a really nice way to jot down bits of information. For example, over the summer, I was trying out this new coffee recipe, and I just put it in my notes app so I could remember the exact ratios. This is very simple and straightforward, but on the other hand, we don't get any fancy interactive or computational features out of a typical notes app. To see some examples of what we might want in this domain of a coffee recipe, we could try putting our recipe into a recipe app. This one's called Paprika, it's very popular. And I just have to do some data entry where I take my text recipe and sort of put it in the right format where I put the ingredients in their own column and I put the notes in their own place. And once I've done that work, I get some nice things. For example, I can scale up the ingredients. You know, I can 4x these amounts and it will do the math for me. I can click two minutes and set a timer directly within the recipe and it will just start counting down. These are really nice features of typical interactive recipe apps. However, these kinds of applications also come with their own corresponding downsides. Apps tend to have a fixed domain that they operate in that's separated from other apps that tackle other domains. Within these domains, they also have a relatively fixed feature set. It's not easy as an end user for me to add new functionality to this app, or often even to remove functionality that I don't need. In this example, Paprika has a bunch of functionality that's adjacent to recipes like grocery list and pantry management that I don't personally want to use, but I can't remove it. And finally, as we saw in the data entry that just happened there, apps tend to have rigid data schemas where we are forced to enter our data in a specific format that the app understands in order to get the computational benefits of the app. Paprika, for example, can't scale ingredients unless they're explicitly entered into this list over here. Note-taking tools offer some compelling benefits that overcome these drawbacks of typical applications. It's very easy to use a note-taking app for many different domains all at once mixed together and to mold it to your needs by jotting down whatever information is relevant to what you're doing. There's also no rigid data schemas and note-taking apps. You can just enter data in a way that makes sense to you. Of course, there's a trade-off here, which is that typical notes apps don't have any mechanism for adding computational or interactive behavior. That brings us to the theme of this project, which we call gradual enrichment. The question we're asking is, could we find some set of primitives that would enable everyday computer users to start with regular text documents and gradually enrich them over time to add interactive and computational behavior as needed. And the key here is that there's never a big step that has to be taken where new formalisms are added to the system. The whole process can be gradual and only as needed. In this work, we propose a three-part interaction model that supports exactly this kind of gradual enrichment workflow. The first part is extensible searches, where users can define their own patterns to identify significant content within the text and extract it. The second part is live computations. We provide a spreadsheet-like live programming environment where users can define computations on top of this data that was extracted from the text. To close the loop, the last part is dynamic annotations. The results of these live computations can be shown back directly within the text note, making it into a form of interactive user interface. We've implemented this interaction model in a tool called Potluck. Let me give you a demo of how we can use Potluck in the context of our coffee recipe. All right, here's the Potluck tool. It starts out looking just like a familiar notes application. I can, you know, type text wherever I want. But what if I'd like to interactively scale up the quantities of coffee and water like I was able to do in Paprika? Let's use the Potluck environment to make that possible. The first step is to search for the relevant data that we care about within the text. To do that, I can click this search icon up here and start a new search. I can start out by just searching for a string literal like 11 grams. And that creates a live search result here where if I were to type 11 grams again in the recipe, you see that we get one search result for every occurrence of that term. Now in this case, we want something a little more general though because we want to match any quantity in grams. So we can replace the number 11 with a more general pattern. Potluck has a number of built-in named patterns, including number. So here we're able to just generalize to any number followed by the letter G. 
We also support dropping into arbitrary regular expressions within these curly braces as well. All right, now we've extracted the quantities. The next step is to scale them up. First, we want to get just the number out of this uh, search result. So we can assign a name to this capture group, and we get a separate column that just contains the numeric part. Now, we can add a new column to our table. Let's call this one scale factor. For now, I'm just going to say always double the recipe and hard code that. Then we can add another column. We'll call this one scaled quantity, where we just do the math, the original amount times the scale factor. This is essentially a spreadsheet formula, and you can see the math is done live here, and we can see the result in the table. Now the last step is to close the loop and to show the result of this computation in the text document itself with a dynamic annotation. To set that up, we can configure this column to show up in the document. There's options like showing it next to the text or above, but in this case I think replacing makes the most sense. So now we can see that scaled quantity replaces the original one. It'd be nice to still have the grams unit there though. These are actually just JavaScript expressions as formulas, so here I can just use JavaScript string interpolation to add a G at the end. Great, now we have our quantities doubled. And by the way, I can still edit the underlying quantities and everything is still reactive here and flows through the, this spreadsheet. The next step is to actually be able to interactively change the scale factor from within the document though, because we don't want to have to edit it here. To do that, I'm just going to add some text, which is going to serve as sort of an anchor for the UI that we're going to add to change the scale factor. I'll just search for that text to create a search result for it. And then in that search, I'm going to add a column where I call a formula called slider. Now this is a special built-in formula that in this case returns not just a data value, but actually an interactive widget. Just like any other annotation, I can configure this one to display in the text document. Now we have the slider in the text. And then from within this table, I can retrieve the value. Um, in this case, it's call 11 dot data dot value. And I can show that annotation in the document as well. So we have the value of the slider showing up in the text document. Now we're almost done. The last step is just to connect this slider scale factor to the actual scale factor being used in the math. To do that, we can go back here and remove this hard-coded value. Instead, we're going to call a formula called find. And this lets us search for data from another table. In this case, we have this table up here that was called search six. And uh, in this case, I guess we called the slider value column 12. Names are optional, as in spreadsheets. And just like that, we have attached the two values. So the neat thing is now at this point, I can just close the search panel and I have an interactive UI here, which I can use to scale the quantities of my recipe. All right, now that we've seen the basic mechanism for how Potluck works, I'm gonna give a whirlwind tour of some of the interesting things we were able to build ourselves in this environment. First, I'll show one more feature we can add to our coffee recipe. I can add a pre-built search called durations, which finds any durations in the document and adds a timer to them. So I can time my coffee as it brews. Let's look at some other documents. Here's a document that we can use to keep track of the schedule for a workshop like this one. Now we have a start time and then we have a bunch of segments and you can see there are times attached to the segments, but these times are annotations and actually underneath, we just have durations for each of these segments. So for example, if I were to, uh, you know, give myself more time in my talk, that would shift all the other things below it, right? Or maybe we could, uh, you know, make it up in the lunch break or something. And the neat thing is the schedule is super fluid to edit. We can add these kind of, uh, light UI elements, we can add notes in here next to the, you know, uh, agenda items. It has some of the flexibility of a text note, but still has this computation. Another interesting use case we had is a tracker for watering your plants at home. 
So in this document, we just have all the plants in our house and we, we say how often we have to water them. And then we just write down when we last watered them. And if it's time to water the plant, the date will turn red. So for example, if I say that date's been updated, now it's green, I no longer have to water that plant. There's also another mechanism here where if I click this little uh, button with a watering can on it, it automatically updates this text to reflect today's date. And I won't go into the details of how that works, but buttons are just another kind of interactive widget annotation that users can add. Of course, you know, if I were to uh, modify the every four days to every two days or something, that would also uh, affect the computation. A neat thing about this note is that we can just add random notes in between these uh, tracking elements. We can also add a new plant very easily, just copy paste. You know, um, it's not a hassle to add a whole new record to this database or anything. We can use familiar text interactions. One more note that I'll show you is this cash register, which you can use to, for example, keep track of sales at a bake sale. And the way it works is you assign a price to each emoji, and then each time you have a sale, you just use these emojis to uh, note what people ordered. And it shows the sale, total sale price for that, um, uh, the things that people bought, as well as the total on, on the day at the bottom. Again, just like any of these text notes, you can take arbitrary notes next to any of these sales. Of course, you could you know, change the price, and everything is reactive. Now I'll close with some brief reflections from building all these demos in public. One thing we found is that Podluck often works quite well when people have a roughly consistent way of writing down and relating some information. For example, you might always write the date before you write down what you did in your workout. We call these personal micro syntaxes, and they tend to be relatively straightforward to parse with the kinds of formulas we have in Potluck. In contrast, it's harder to parse arbitrary content, you know, like a recipe that someone wrote on the internet. And that sort of thing often devolves into natural language processing problems that are not easily solved by simple regular expressions and patterns. We also found that there are some nice opportunities for tool reuse in Potluck. So there's lots of generic tools like a timer that you might be able to use in a workout or in a recipe. And because all these different domains share the common substrate of text documents, it's actually possible to share and reuse these kinds of tools. There's another kind of composition as well, which is that you can combine multiple domains and kinds of tools within a single note. There's not the typical boundaries that an application would have. So you can have, you know, in this case, a recipe and the notes about when you made the recipe, or you could have a workout and a recipe for a nutrition shake shared within these single notes, and that tends to break down some of the walls between domains. Finally, I'll share a couple of possibilities that we think would be interesting for extending this work. Sometimes text is not the right interface for looking at and visualizing some data. You want a more structured view. For example, when you have a workout note like this, you might want to have some way of seeing a calendar where if I add a new workout, I can see my workouts appear in the calendar. A neat thing we found here is that if you show the context from the original text document within this user interface, that can also help tie together the two representations as well. Another area for improvement here is the formula language. In this project, we kept it out of scope to innovate on the language itself. We just used JavaScript. But unsurprisingly, we found that when we tested the system with people who were not as familiar with JavaScript, they struggled to learn the language as kind of part of expressing more complex computations. Finally, the hot topic these days, machine learning. We think that there's actually some nice opportunities to apply ML in a tool like Potluck, although we didn't get around to it in this project. First, there's a really natural role for machine learning here, which is the role of extracting these this structured data from unstructured text. There are many kinds of extraction that regular expressions and hard-coded patterns struggle with, things like extracting all the ingredients from an arbitrary recipe. And these are places where we think machine learning could possibly really help 
without necessarily taking over the entire task from the user. It would be just focused on the extraction. Machine learning could possibly also help with the computational parts, maybe helping end users auto-generate formulas and things like that to reduce the burden of writing traditional code. There is a tension to consider here though, which is that one of the reasons it feels nice to use Potluck in practice is that the pattern recognition system is fast and deterministic and predictable. So you can get instant feedback that your input has been recognized by the system and you can learn to work with the system. Machine learning systems tend to be less predictable and less fast. And so that might harm some of those interaction benefits that we get from the current system. All right, that's all I have time to share right now. But there's a lot more content in our essay about this work that's at that URL. Thanks so much for taking the time to listen, and I look forward to your questions.